<laughs> uh, you're off. You're off. Hello, and welcome to our podcast, where the dark corners are. Hello, hello. I am Vina, and I am your Dark Travels hostess. Tonight, we're doing a Halloween special. And, as such, I'm actually joined by the crew, including... Road trip with the panda. Hello. Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I haven't dressed up in forever, so. I love Halloween. That's nice. Do you? <laughs> you were there. I was I though? Were you? Okay. I mean, you gotta walk around in the cold. Yes. Candy. Yes. I mean, it's nice to get candy. But, but then it was I can't eat it all. There's hard no point. Earned, like, hard mean, earned. Yeah. Hard earned. Okay. Yeah. For fucking Chancho walking down the streets. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty hard. Was sweating, shitting. <laughs> In the cold, yeah. Introduce the rest of these people, please. It, it, All right. it wouldn't be so cold if you didn't dress like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy a ho, nurse is a ho is never cold. <laughs> <laughs> and Valentine, just out of curiosity, did they celebrate Halloween in Ukraine when you were? Nope, negatory. Yeah, not even not for e- the Russians. Not even a thing. Yeah, didn't hear about it till I came here. Was it your favorite thing about America? I don't know. I think, okay. you like the, I think you like the women in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat women in baseball. I mean, you can in both those things. <laughs> Just one's illegal. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. So this is where this is already going. It's really hot in here. <laughs> Samantha, what was your favorite costume? That I've ever worn? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Um, she looks like a Daphne. Well, I wouldn't say I. I hate Halloween. I hate decorating shit. But Whoa, I don't damn. mind it wow. per se. Oh. Like my kids just want to decorate, and I don't want to do that. I'm tired, and I don't really like to dress <laughs> up. So I. Oh, last year though, when I went to work, because you know we work at a professional place, so you have to like be normal. I went as uh, the guy from Back to the Future, Marty McFly. You was Marty? It was like spot on. It That's was actually cool. really good. But I'd say my favorite costume is when I look back at my childhood and I had to be like six or seven. My parents dressed me up as a clown. I fucking hate clowns. Why would you do that? I can't even look in the mirror. She's the spirit of Halloween, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you, there, there's some Halloween trauma there. I am the trauma. spirit of absolutely nothing ever. <laughs> you're you're part fine. of the problem. <laughs> we went driving around looking for Halloween houses that are decorated, and not a lot of people decorated. My house and is decorated. My kids were really disappointed. They're like, "These people suck. These people suck. These people are really cool. Good job!" And she'll give them a little clap. Oh gosh. <laughs> Where did, did you? Okay, we'll talk after. All we'll, right. We'll, I'll give you some tips. Val, do you remember a favorite costume? Favorite costume. In high school, I went as the crow from the movie The Crow with Brandon Lee. Yeah. And, yeah, it was great. I painted my hair black and my face white and had black markings on it. <laughs> and my girlfriend at the time really loved it. Oh. You didn't marry her? I did. Oh. Uh, <laughs> there was <laughs> wise choices yeah, of a teenager. <laughs> way, way to ruin the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken, folks. Sorry. <laughs> Like nah, I don't know. I don't remember any of my costumes. What? I, really I think don't. your mother. I remember, fat I remember dressing up as Batman Beyond one time, and I was just a little fat kid, you know. <laughs> 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 Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I have else, like, no doubt your mother did a fabulous job. I don't remember any That's of my sure. costumes. I, I remember us going trick or treating together. I don't remember what we were. Wearing. I, I don't remember what we were. Mm. I I think I just. 
I just was there for the candy, yo. Did All right. Best. Yeah, but well. see, that's the thing. I don't have any investment in dressing myself, but I love dressing my kids up. Like la- two years ago, three years ago, they mm-hmm. were Mario, Louis- Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach, and that's I thought cool. we killed it. That's dope. They were so cool. Well, what were we for? Remember Rick's party? Mm. Did we dress up for that? I was a plague doctor because it was in the middle. Oh of yeah, COVID. you had the thing. Oh. Was it? It was in the middle of COVID. Well done. Was it? it? Yeah. Oh, it was during COVID. Dude, that yeah. was like two years ago. You don't yeah. remember that? I don't remember when we had Rick's party. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he, but they it was w- really cool. They dressed up as literally almost all of the Toy Story characters because mm-hmm. they had a big family. So they were. It was Bo Peep. Of, yeah, Bo Peep, Woody. I think Buzz was there. Yeah, and then they the, had the alien. The alien was it a slinky? A sheep. They had a slinky. Fuck, you got too many kids. <laughs> I love the family costume. Yeah, they're cool. They're, they're, they're a beautiful family. Good job. Well, <laughs> I mean, speaking of which, okay, mine was okay. Hold oh, no, on, we were we're still on the yeah. topic. My bad. About I, you? About I you? I don't remember if I dressed up though. That's what I'm trying to remember. That's the problem. No one ever thinks about their mother. We're, anyway. we're coming to you. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. Oh, all right. Either way, what was your favorite costume? I rocked. Oh God, Princess Leia. Oh no! Yes, you, and my mother, dressed as Princess <laughs> Leia. Which one? Return of the Jedi or no. New Hope? New Hope. Or wait, Empress Strikes Back. You had the new life jacket. Hope. My oh, mother okay. dressed me up. New Hope. You have a picture of this? Actually, I don't want to see it. No, I was like five. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> all this context is, is so much better because when you first said oh my mother I was like why what's wrong because all I thought about was like the hair and the white mm, gown yeah, thing and then I was like oh wait princess. pulled bikini yeah, oh no that's 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 return of the Jedi. my mother like, would not have done that my well, mother was a saint yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and then she you was said a party five oh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know the new hope she wasn't wearing nothing you know that right don't ruin you it. You know that, right? I know that. You no know bra, that, right? No underwear in right. space. There's no I saw undies in space. The Thanks, clip. George Lucas. Yes. Thanks, buddy. Were you Mr. Potato Head? Oh, I was Mr. Potato, Mr. Potato, Potato Head. Head. That's why I dressed up as Mr. Potato Head. That's right. I actually do like that costume. That was a pretty good one. Okay. <laughs> oh, that, was fun. that was a fun night. Mr. Potato Head. He was dancing and grinding. <laughs> <laughs> he was or you were I was brother. Yeah, right, right there I, I don't oh. have a picture of you oh, I think I was taking the picture <laughs> oh. He was just trying to get his spuds wet I was There was a Mrs. Potato Head there <laughs> <So> <laughs> She was married too To a different potato but Different you know. spud oh, no. <laughs> Different spud different, I'm a married spud <laughs> That's what she was <laughs> saying <laughs> These are the spud days of our lives Oh god oh. Alright So for this uh, Halloween Special episode we decided to discuss the many ways of killing Hollywood monsters. How do you kill a Hollywood monster? How do you kill werewolves? Dracula. Spoilers. I, what spoilers? I haven't gotten there yet. You just said you just two, two, half the, half the podcast in two <laughs> seconds. I, I have Surprise! two things right now. we're killing. And those were the two things. <laughs> and... We're also obviously going to give a little bit of history as to where these Hollywood monsters came from. Right. I would assume, yeah, the impact they've had all of it. I mean, I, we're talking about Hollywood monsters, so the Americanized, or not Americanized, the American monsters of... Of the cinema. Of, yeah. Yeah. The top four. Yes, I think so. So, you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> My you think yours is top yeah, you four? Top Hell yeah. Anything. What? He derailed it. Did you not hear my kill count speech before the podcast started? <laughs> <laughs> he's up there. Top three of it's kills. It's like he's bragging about it. I am. This hey, dude. Not even a monster. Okay. <laughs> right? He's a monster. Well, there's more. Well, is Batman po- really a superhero? So here's the thing, too. Is like want to start that one? Okay. So mine was the Invisible Man. I don't think I said that already. He was created by H.G. Wells. In a novel, The Invisible Man, which was produced in 1897. So, but he didn't become, I mean, it it was, H.G. Wells is basically the father of science fiction in general. So he's got plenty right, of- Right, World of the War of the, War the World. Worlds, Invisible Man, Man on the, People on the Moon, something like that. It was a bunch of it. You know, he's the science fiction guy. But so in 97, he creates a story- Dr. Griffin, who's basically, he's just, he's just an asshole. He wants to be better than everybody else, so he creates this invisible serum. And he injects himself, and he becomes the invisible man. How did he find it? Huh? How did he find the serum? He made it. Yeah, but it was He's invisible. a scientist. 
Huh? It was invisible. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was probably colorful he said shit. It was invisible. He becomes invisible. So either way, he uses it and and he be, you know he becomes invisible and then he just starts doing his own thing. He starts he starts he starts doing some very bad things. He starts murdering people, sexual assaults. I mean, the, just making people's lives go crazy. Like because if there's a you know someone's in the room but you don't see them. You know, right? Could you imagine just? But I mean, then you can't tell anyone like there's someone in the room with me, but because no one, they can't see, they can't see the motherfucker. But essentially, the good guys win because the mob ends up getting tired of his shit, and he's he's going crazier and crazier from the serum. So the only weakness is, is he's still human. No matter who takes the mantle of the Invisible Man, they're still human regardless of what they are. That makes him mortal, right? So he's mortal the whole time, but being invisible, you. It's you know it's pretty easy to do whatever you want. The only problem with it too is you're fucking naked the whole time. If you want to be pu- purely invisible, so it's never the clothes that are invisible. Is it's that, just the skin. Is that a problem or is that a benefit? I was gonna say, what if you love being naked? Well, I mean, like, yeah. Yes. But if I'm, if I'm living where I'm living now and I have to run across the street naked, <laughs> it's gonna be cold as fuck. <laughs> Why would you run across the street? To get to the someone's house to fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> to murder them. <laughs> Well, that's the point. So the point of the book was to to prove that a human's hubris would come into play. Like, you know, if you know you can get away with whatever. Would you do it? Would you do it? And he does it. And so in, what, I think, 1933, they make a movie, The Invisible Man. And it's actually kind of, so the the doctor who makes the serum, he's actually a good person in compa- in comparison to the book where he's an asshole. But he makes the serum, he actually does it, and then he regrets it. But as he's the invisible man, he starts start losing his, his own sanity to himself, his own humanity, and he starts becoming this vilified guy. But at the same time, he's trying to cure it, and then it kind of turns into... It's like a Walter White scenario, if you think about it. It's like Breaking Bad. You know, he starts off the right way. With good intentions. Good intentions. And pay, then, off, pay for his and cancer. And then his own hubris kicks in. And his own arrogance, his own ego takes over. And at the you know, at the end of the Invisible Man, at least, he actually gets shot. He shot an invisible man, which was a hell of a shot by a guy. Just saying. Right. His downfall was the the the, the, the footprints in the snow. So he like look at the footprints, he's like, I just pointed that way. Right. And got him. Got him. <laughs> but I mean it, he's from that movie, the special effects back then, making invisible f- footprints in nineteen thirty three was was fucking crazy, mm-hmm. right? Right, right, right. In fact, my one of my favorite movies is Topper Returns. It's a, it's a, it's a comedy, so it's obviously not intense. With the right. footprints in there's the, intense scenes in that fucking movie. Uh, oh yeah, well yeah, the girl gets yeah, murdered. Yeah, yeah. yeah, people die. Regardless, you know, but you know that was the, the they made all these effects for the Invisible Man. Like, how does because he puts on bandages and he wears. Glasses and a hat to signify that's who he is when he's talking to people and he wants to be seen by somebody. So when they have the conversations, you know, he puts all that on. But on screen, you see him take it off and now he's gone. But it was, I mean, just to think about it, in 33, they found a way to do that. Right. To shoot that. I mean, nowadays they can make dead people be full blown actors. Right. Right. So. Oh, yeah. I've watched, what was it? Uh, Ghostbusters? Afterlife, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good one. Spoilers, Spangler, yeah, spoilers, shit, spoilers. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I mean, it's been it's been a couple of years. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, either way, <laughs> but you know, the Visible Man, because of that movie, he became Hollywood's biggest creature, or one of the biggest creatures, one of the biggest monsters to worry about. The Visible Man is he watching you? Is he in the room with you? Right? Are you ever really alone? It spawned uh, five more movies, all canon with each other. I don't think any of them. Ended up being as serious or as good as the first one. Because, like, the last one they make is The the Visible Man with Abstello, uh, the fuck are their names? The don- the comedy duo, Abbott oh, and, and Costello. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, they start, it spawned the idea of two Hollow Man movies, the one with Kevin Bacon. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. And then the Hollow Man 2 with Mosh. Christian Slater. Oh. No, then The Invisible Man, the reboot. With what? With Moss. Elizabeth Moss. That was my favorite one. That was a good one. Okay. Have you seen it? No. You ever seen The Invisible Man? No. You guys haven't watched it? That one's fairly recent, right? Yeah, the 2020 one. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's fucking good. 
I wanted to see it. I just didn't. It's not a very long movie either. It's good. She does a good job. All right. So that is your recommendation. Are you going to tell us about the train? You, you were talking shit about the train. Oh, now you want me to bring I up the train. I wanted to know the facts. All of a sudden, the train, the fact of the matter was he, you know, he starts losing his mind while the serum's in him in the original 33 film movie, mm-hmm. and he's working with people to try to get it back, but then they're kind of seeing the change in him, so they're like, well, maybe we should put him down and end up betraying him, and then at his anger, he ends up derailing a train kill, with over 100 people on it. So and he ends up pushing like two volunteer searchers off a cliff and shit. Like it's fucking weird. That's like, oh fuck, he's just murdering dudes now. Mm-hmm, nice. So, well, I mean, it, it's an actually a great morale question or moral question, rather. right? If you if you had the power of invisibility, would you abuse it? Man, yeah. Well. well, I mean, what could you really do? It's not like you could rob a bank and like just someone's walking out with a like a pile of cash. How much could you do other than just like being a shitty person? I mean, like that's other the thing. than murdering. I mean, who people. knows? Like, what other crimes? You know, it kind of almost reminded me of the Golden State Killer, how he would preset things where he knew he was going to commit a crime. So, if you were that smart and you were premeditative in that nature, in robbing a bank, you would have the two by four right there, readily available for the armored truck guy. When he shows up, you just grab it and whack him with it. Right. You could watch truck. how they, they do their. Procedures and just leave or do whatever. I mean, you're invisible. You're literally invisible. Right. I mean, they would see you carrying the cash off, obviously. That, that I mean, I mine went straight cartoon. Like, oh, know, yeah. That, stealing an armored truck makes He's just a lot walking out there and taking shit. Yeah, do, 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 do. No, they Being have, just so everyone knows, not only we're not recommending this idea, but the armored trucks, they have truckers. So don't do that. They have truckers? Trackers. Oh, trackers. But also, if you got in the back, you can't get in the front, right? Because they're... Correct. Yeah, they're Correct. Those are two separate entrances. Yeah. All right. So mine was actually the mummy. Oh. One of the things about the mummy is, like, it's actually a combination of dif- a few different factors. The mummy itself kind of gets an the first inkling of... Of, of of becoming of the mummy is in 1922 with the discovery of the pharaoh Tutankhamun, and of course I'm referring to the archaeologist Howard Carter, who had been in the Valley of of the Kings. He had been for ten years. So he in early November 1922, he actually finds the tomb, but he actually waits. For the guy who bankrolls his dig, his archaeology dig, a Lord Carnivon. This is King Tut? Correct. Okay. And he, so he shows up and he actually gets here kind of quickly for how late it is or how early it is in terms of transportation. And bear in mind, one of the things, this is right after World War II. So, you know, the world's trying to recover. So when they hear this amazing news... And they hear that this explorer guy went on this adventure and finds this massive, impressive, intact tomb. Before Carter opens it, he comes across the curse. There's a curse actually etched on like the sarcophagus. But Carter waits for the Lord and his daughter, Evelyn. If that name doesn't sound familiar, it should. So they open it up despite the curse. And suddenly the world is completely excited. They have this scenario where this explorer has found this wonderful treasure. And, I mean, they're even creating songs. And then, as it is, in March of 1923, a writer and novelist by the name of Marie Corelli, and I don't know why she did this, she sends a letter to the New York World magazine and she says there there will be dire consequences to anyone who disturbs the ancient tomb of this particular pharaoh. And, I mean, she even, in the letter, she quotes from this strange, obscure book that, again, you know, they, no one can find on eBay, um, to support what she's saying that you, you've, you've released a curse. There's bad shit that's about to happen. And... Then she herself ends up dying the very next year. 
So here, he, the curse was on the tomb. Here she's like, you done fucked up. And then she dies. And then the Lord himself supposedly gets killed with the curse through a spider bite. Okay. So now it's just escalating. The person that said, who gives the warning, you've done a shitty thing, you've done mm-hmm. something bad, she dies. Then the guy who was there who paid the bill, he dies. And then it goes on to even the lights of Cairo went out the day he died. And even the Lord's dog howled longingly for his master. And then he dies as well. So the lights go out in Cairo. The The Lord's dog cries for his beloved master and kills over and dies himself. And on top of that, a gentleman by the name of George J. Gold I, who visits the tomb, because as soon as this discovery happens, reporters from all around the world just run to this place. Visitors, tourists just run to this place. But George himself dies a little month after the Lord dies. The prince of Egypt, an Egyptian prince, Prince Bey, in July of 1923, just seven months after they open it, he gets murdered by his wife in London. And of course, it's like, well, he's from Egypt and, you know, it, it's all about the curse. And if that's not enough, the Lord's half brother dies in 1923. And everyone just keeps feeding off of everybody who keeps coming into contact or has something to do with the opening of this tomb dies. Except that Evelyn, she actually lives in 1980. So here again, it's a scenario where, and, and you know, they had the radio. There's no TV at this point. They have newspapers. Just then this person died and then the dog dies. And then, but in reality, okay, just so you know, the Lord, but I mean, even this, I'm kind of like, who dies from this? He apparently had a mosquito bite, which as he was shaving, he nicked. And then he ends up dying from an infection of the mosquito bite. So, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Who dies from a fucking what mosquito the fuck? bite? What the fuck, man? So, well, West well, Nile. Malaria. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but still, a fucking infection because of a fucking little bug. Big. Yeah. The, so that's a real thing. So I kind of go, on yeah, that one. That's a fucking poison dart shot from a, uh African tube tube thing. Okay. Correct. <laughs> I'm getting back in that episode that we did, the cursed jewelry. This has that, that vibe, yeah. <laughs> vibe for sure. So with this discovery in, in 1922... And in addition to, you know, Universal Studios going, we're going to start this whole genre, and they kick it off with Dracula, which was a huge success. And then you add Boris Karloff to play the part of the mummy, which, by the way, was originally called Imhotet, if that sounds. And so Carl Lamel and his son, who also worked for Universal Studios, invent the monster, the mummy, based on the fact that this scenario happened in 1922. And so over time, and the original version, Boris Karloff is just wearing like a fez hat, okay, Mm -hmm. as the mummy. He's actually not even wrapped. But over time, when they want to do like a little change up and try to add this, try to add that, then slowly but surely the mummy becomes wrapped in his Wraps, which in theory is, in my opinion, a correct depiction because that's what mummies are. They're literally wrapped. So over the years, the question becomes, how do you kill a mummy? One of my favorite movies from a kid from teenage years was The Monster Squad. And the way to kill that mummy was they basically shot an arrow through the bandage, tagged the bandage to the tree, and basically unraveled <laughs> the mummy. Another way is basically using the same Egyptian magic that was used to revive the mummy to send them back to hell or whatever the underworld they came from. And in some movies, magical artifacts. Like in, I think, the third of the sequence 
of the mummy, the mummy returns, the mummy returns again, only in China. It was a magical oh, dagger. Oh, which, which one are we talking about? The Brendan Fraser one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't they remember the third one like at all. Uh, the third one was weird. That one was set in China. Right. And it was a magical dagger. Oh. So magical relics, artifacts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but it, the question really begets, what do you kill someone that's already dead? You make it mortal. So they did in the Brandon Fraser one. Correct. But the and then the they living. also recommend. The the oh, yeah, the Book of the Living. They also recommend either burning them or blowing them to pieces. I'm not blowing anything to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go Disney under wraps, you just take their little medallions off. And then oh, they go back yeah, to yeah, being yeah, a mummy. Yeah. Or Scooby-Doo, just keep going. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the story of the, the mummy. And, then, and that also points to the fact that I forget to say that all Universe Studios owns all our monsters. Right. Yeah. So. Universally. Universally, <laughs> universally, all of our monsters. I like the mummy. I like the Brendan Fraser mummy. Yeah. I think that was one of the great, That's one of the best movies. Yes, movies. yeah. And it is a great Halloween movie, mm -hmm. um, without any swearing, and no sex. Maybe there's a there's there's swear. sexual innuendos. There's those that cast. It, it's all over TikTok. Everything. Everyone brings it up. That cast is fucking hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From old girl. Wearing her little black seat through thing, ooh, really that's ooh, and then Brendan Fraser himself to the fucking face tattoo guy. I forget his name. I don't remember his name. Who would later become oh, the, the, the Gigolo? Magi. Yeah, the Gigolo. The Magi guy. Yeah, the Magi yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, he plays Gigolo in America Gigolo <laughs> or whatever. Uh, Deuce Bigelow. Deuce, Deuce Bigelow. Bigelow American Gigolo. Gigolo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all those fools. Even the even the Rock shows up in the second one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. the Scorpion. He's a Scorpion King. Bad CGI, but I mean, yeah, we're super yeah. bad. Yeah. Well, but, but it was also two thousand two or something. Right. Yeah, it's old. It was old. So that's it. That's the mummy. That's why she chose us. <laughs> she just want to talk about the cast. The cast. Brandon. Brandon. He's still there. He's making his comeback. He's well. He never. Oh, yeah. Let's see his comeback. Yeah. This shit even happened. We him. wish you luck, Brandon. He's got it. He's a bear. <laughs> So I got the werewolf, which is conveniently one of my favorites. Not my favorite monster. So the original, you know, the very first idea of the werewolf, so be meaning part man, part wolf, is first seen in the epic of Gilgamesh, which is a poem from ancient Mesopotamia dated back as far as tw uh, 2100 B.C. It is a second oldest religious text after the pyramid texts. Mm -hmm. So the mummy was just a little older. <laughs> and that being said, the Vikings used animal skins. The berserkers used animal skins to wear on top of their heads like bears and wolves. So it was often seen as a beast man on the battlefield just smashing through other people's armies. Almost like taking their spirit... Taking the spirit of the beast. Right. Yeah. It was. They were in. They were. They were the biggest, the strongest, most stamina. You know, it was. Yeah. It was the guys that w everybody looked at him, and they were like, "Those guys are not human. Those guys are more than human." So that was the Viking mythology. There was also stories of werewolves in the Greek mythology. In the Greek legend, a man, ironically named Lycone, who was angry with the king of the gods, Zeus. He challenged his wisdom. He didn't believe that Zeus was all-knowing. So, to trick Zeus, he served Zeus a pie made out of his own child, which is pretty fucked up, but all of Greek mythology is fucked up. Oh. <laughs> um, determined that Zeus would not know what he was eating. However, the all-knowing Zeus wasn't so easily tricked. He knew that Lycan was trying to deceive him, and as punishment for his crimes, he turned Lycan and 50 of his sons into wolves. So, I guess, I mean, that's why he probably fed him one, because he had kids to spare. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> the kids, man. He, <laughs> chose the he probably chose the least favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty messed up story. But the real life events. So, the idea of the werewolf that we know today, I believe, originated in France. This is based on a true story between 1764 and 1767. There were unknown attacks on people by some sort of beast. Eyewitnesses would say it was a wolf, but much larger. 
Some believe that it was a pack of wolves because of the number of the attacks and the brutality of it. So the bodies were always discovered mingled and often beheaded or with their throats torn out. The people began to think that it was a supernatural beast, a werewolf, because they believed that a wolf couldn't hunt and stalk its prey the way that this beast and go unnoticed after the attacks. They also believed that it couldn't have been a man, like a serial killer of sorts, because they didn't think that a man was capable of such brutality and such gruesomeness. All of the killings took place within a 50-mile radius. A study estimated that there were over 600 attacks by this beast, with 500 deaths, 49 injuries, and about 100 of the victims were partially eaten. The province of Wanden started their own kind of witch hunt. They're, they had a werewolf hunt, just like we talked to in Salem. Because they thought that perhaps one of them was turning into the beast? Of, yeah, of To sorts. weed out who yeah. the human They're, was? They were trying to weed them out. They were uh, running... They were also running search parties through the woods, trying to track trying to the beast, lure, track him, lure him out, and the, they found beasts and monsters and wolves in the woods. So before the attacks even stopped, the wolf, the werewolf, was reported to be killed several times, and some of the reports said that he, they shot him and he fell over and he looked dead, and then just after a little bit, he would get up and run off at a Nope. Well, they probably weren't using supernatural. They were probably they were using muskets, right? <laughs> so, however, you know these are experienced hunters. They they know what wolves look like. That really happened, and people just didn't believe that it could have been just a regular animal doing these unbelievable things. So they came up with a concept of a werewolf, like a person turning into a beast, and then. As as time progressed, uh, as we know in today's culture, the, they use the werewolf as a curse that's transferred by a werewolf bite or a werewolf scratch, and they usually turn on a full moon. Some lore, like Vampire Diaries and stuff like that, you know, they, they get extremely handsome guys playing Cute. the werewolves, extra muscular. Six pack comes with the wolf, <laughs> right? And I mean, I don't know whether it's to portray that you know they're muscular or kind of like appeal them more to the opposite sex or if it w- just Hollywood Hollywood yeah Hollywooded Hollywooded Hollywood <laughs> eyes Hollywood yeah eyes and there. then uh, as time progressed the 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 werewolves got the CGI and stuff were better and better portrayed because it started out with just a really hairy man you know right even uh, in the Abbott and Costello yeah. one I think it's they meet Frankenstein I think, I think they be like everybody yes they did a pretty good progression mm-hmm. of the werewolf in that movie. So, I mean, even for back then. Yeah. Is that the call of the werewolf? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, now it's they're working on it better and better. I wanted to share some of my favorite movies that had werewolves in it. Which was the Underworld series. Oh, yes. I love those. Had excellent werewolves in it. Then I recently watched this movie, and I recommend you guys watch it for Halloween, actually. It's called The Werewolf of Snow Hollow. Of Snow Hollow? Yeah. And I never heard of this movie until I seen a little advertisement. It was on sale, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get it. And it was was kind of funny, but it's also, (laughs) it's not, it's not. A horror movie. It's like a thriller that kind of keeps you guessing as to who the werewolf is. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know who the werewolf is until the last five minutes of the movie, which was perfect. And uh, but it's about the deputy, the sheriff's deputy, and he's just going through some shit. He's got some. He, he's like, uh, he's ex uh, alcoholic, so he goes to AA meetings, and then he's like, his whole world just comes crushing down on him, and he's just not dealing well with it mentally. But. The werewolf was really good. And it's a small town. So you see how a small uh, police department that never had to deal with something like that, how they get overwhelmed and how they don't know what to do. Right. You know, one of the cops always keeps throwing that werewolf idea out there. Yeah, they're like, just shut the fuck up. There's no no such thing. That's the trope, the the, the usual for a werewolf 
script. It's a small town. The brutally sheriff's got to bring the, the werewolf down. He's got to find out who it is. Mm-hmm. Right, the witch hunt. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, some sometimes the werewolf is the good guy, you know? Right. Teenage wolf. Uh, well, teen, uh, teen wolf. Teen wolf. Yeah, yeah, he was With Michael right. J. Fox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. fucking love that movie. That is one of the <laughs> best fucking movies. I fucking, I dig it. <laughs> well, then MTV redid it, right? Oh, they did do it. Yeah, there's a TV show. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, even uh, Teen Wolf too. Where it's, it's, it's Jason just cousin. Bateman. Is it Jason Bateman? Yeah, <gasps> it is. I ever seen it so long, and Jason <laughs> Bateman. Yeah, you know, I, I wasn't around at that time. So, right. whoa, whoa, I wasn't the <laughs> in my ovaries. What? <laughs> you keep your ovaries. <laughs> But this new one that came out on Disney Plus, Werewolf by Night. Oh, I wanted to watch it. It's good. Is it? It's 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 all black and white. It's all black and white. There's a couple of color scenes, but that's to signify certain things. Uh, I'm not sure how it plays into other things, but it's on Disney Plus. It's it's, it's only only an hour. Yeah, it's it's only an hour. It's like a short story. I wanted to watch it. It's good. I was like, I don't know. Okay. It's very good. How do you Um, kill a werewolf? Kindness. Hold on. (laughs) One more. Last one. It's one of my favorite movies. It has a lot of the monsters in it. And it actually kind of has bad reviews. <laughs> I just noticed, but it's been my favorite movie since like I was little. It's uh, Van Helsing. With, oh yeah, uh, Van Helsing. Hugh Jackman. That was dope. Okay. The werewolves in that movie are excellent. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're really cool. It have, has Dracula in it. it has Dracula's brides. Uh, to spoil the movie, uh, they're working on undead babies. They're trying to. The whole point is Dracula's <laughs> trying to have more vampire babies. Okay. But right. You dead. see why the movie didn't make it? <laughs> I know. I liked it. I yeah, liked it. Is movie. this vampire porn? Van is that what Van we're Helsing hearing? was good. Because Hugh Jackman, yeah, it's good. Hugh Jackman's I don't want to spoil it. Uh, Kate Beckinsale's in it. Yes. Oh, she's Love beautiful. Her. I think his beautiful. sister. I think she's his sister. No, she's, no, his, she's the love interest. Yeah, the love interest. Okay. Well. She's badass, too. And Frankenstein's in there. Is he? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's the much. he's the key. You know, you know what like movie uh, Werewolf wasn't invited to? Hmm. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh yeah, that's Suck a, a fish. That's Guess who a, was in it? Guess who's in it? <laughs> the invisible say man. it. Fucking say <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Even uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde made it. He's a weirdo. He was in Van Helsing too. Yeah, but he was better in <laughs> League. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Is that was a terrible movie. movie. I loved it. Oh, it's I such a good movie. It is a terrible movie. Okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I, I, when I was doing research for Invisible Man, that the movie came up about it because Invisible Man's in it. Sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's not really him. He just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time in the movie. Either way, the point being is that a lot of younger generation, millennials or whatever you want to call us or whatever, basically everyone around that time watched that movie in theaters and went, holy fuck, that was awesome. All these characters put together, put together. to do hood rat Avengers. Shit. Yeah, the first <laughs> Avengers. But... On the, what's the best way to put this? The parental side. <laughs> <laughs> the, the seasoned folk. The seasoned right? folk. The salt and peppers. <laughs> <laughs> just did not like that movie. No, because it was shitty. What is, whenever you're going to see Captain Nemo, the Visible Man, yeah. the Dracula Lady. Hopefully in a better movie. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And Sean and, Connery. And Sean Connery. Who's a superhero well, he's dead, on his own. So well, he's happen. cursed. He's cursed in the movie and he can't get hurt or whatever. But and so he probably didn't he didn't die. He comes back. Okay. Allegedly. But you're never gonna see a movie with Captain Nemo in it. That dude didn't give a cool. fuck. Remember when you fucking fought that Nazi fucking thing with the story? He's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll rewatch it, but okay. I, I haven't watched it in a long time. I would like <laughs> to watch it again after hearing about it, because I was like, Yeah, that's right. It was a little man made to cut. Okay. We're taking the spotlight off Slasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. And suddenly it's well, becoming like a movie recommendation right? scenario. Well, it's also because she's got the biggest one of all of us, oh, I think. so you kill a werewolf by shooting him with a silver bullet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just in case. I, I would like to add one to your list of good werewolf movies. This one's an oldie but goodie. American Wolf. Or, when you're talking about American, American Were- werewolf, werewolf in, in London. London, I'm talking about Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet. It's with uh, Gary Bussey. Okay. Oh, okay, it's a good yeah. one. It's a seasoned <laughs> movie. Yeah, see, yeah It's Salt actually pepper. a pretty decent Stephen King book. Silver Bullet. Or oh, movie. Silver Bullet, Silver Bullet. Uh, small town. Small town trope. Yeah. Even, You're going to yeah. hurt your brain. Yeah, I hurt my brain thinking about it. There's so many werewolves in our movies. Twilights and Vampire Diaries and what's that fucking HBO show they used to be on? Oh, uh, the, with Anna, like, what are, what's her face? I don't remember. It's like sex half an episode, and then yeah. it's like drama. I was talking about. <sighs> True Blood? Drew, 
called something like that? Yeah, I think it's called True Blood. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Silver Bullet. Yeah, I remember something like that now. All right, Samantha, bring us home with the best one. A legend. The, the king of the monsters. Yeah, the one yeah. that just shows up everywhere. <laughs> the most popular. So I did my own little take since I think that this could be monotonous because everyone knows about it. So with that said, long before the heartthrobs of Twilight <laughs> stole the hearts of teenage girls everywhere, a different OG vampire was ruling the supernatural world. Enter Count Dracula. Count Dracula, or Dracula to his friends, first showed up on the scene in Bram Stoker's 1897 got the core novel of the same name. Dracula is an undead, centuries-old vampire and Transylvanian nobleman. He inhibits inhabits a dying castle, or d- okay, <laughs> he inhabits a decaying castle in the Carpathian Mountains. Dracula used black magic to turn himself into a vampire, but did so out of eternal love for his bride, whom he would meet again in 1897 when she was reincarnated as Mina Murray in England. This character was said to be based on the 15th century's Vlad the Impaler, who was also known as Dracula. He got that surname from his father, who was known as Dracul, so he was known as the son of Dracul, which was actually the old Romanian word for dragon. In modern Romanian, the word drac refers to the devil. Stroker was stuck by this word, and it used this word for the name of the character because of its devilish devilish associations. One of Dracula's most iconic powers is his ability to turn others into vampires by biting them and inflicting them with the vampiric disease. Vampires have been depicted as everything from repulsive, corpse-like creatures to the handsome and charismatic Dracula to the shiny, light-sensitive, sparkling sparkling skin, over-emotional vampires of Twilight. Vampire strengths, so I listed these out, they include... Immense physical strength, stealthiness, which apparently is not a word, attractiveness and seduction, (laughs) right? (laughs) My little squiggly line does not love stealthiness. Anyway, attractiveness and seduction, night vision, shapes shifting into bats, immortality, extremely fast running, and their weaknesses include garlic, the sun, silver, fire, crosses, holy water, mirrors, Van Helsing, werewolves, (laughs) specifically Taylor Lautner. (laughs) Wait, wait a minute. I don't think vampires run. I've never seen one run. They usually just convert into a bat. Well, there are so many new shows where they just run hella fast. I think oh, Twilight okay. runs hella yeah, fast. Uh, yeah, you can climb a them. mountain with her on the Yeah, back. there's a bunch of them that they run hella fast, so whatever. Sparkle. Did Sparkle. you get that in there? I, well, I put yeah. it in the front. Transformation <laughs> of bats. Is that a weakness or a strength? Yes. <laughs> right? I was like, I don't know where to put that if you, one. If you angle it right, you can blind somebody. <laughs> I can't be in the sun because I sparkle. <laughs> so emo. I love the most emotional girl in high school. <laughs> I'm still at the same high school for the last t- 30 years. No one's noticed. It's mm, fine. It's fine. <laughs> so. <laughs> Fucking movie. How to kill a vampire. If you want to go old school, a wood, wood stake through the heart should work. You can decapitate them and stuff garlic in their mouth. A sacred but not silver bullet. You could expose them to sunlight unless they're from twilight, then they just sparkle. You could chop their heads off and burn their bodies. Or if you're into vampire diaries, you could use a white oats, white oak steak to kill the v- original vampires. Or you can pour holy water on them. Okay. Hmm. You know. What's Dracula's first name? Vlad. Is it Vlad? So it's oh. Count Vlad Dracula. <laughs> you think his first name's Count? <laughs> well, <laughs> I know it's Count, Count Dracula. I just want to make sure on the same page because there was a there was debates on it when I was it happened to pop up too. And well, like, what was the other names? Well, it's like there's no way it could be Vlad because it sounds weird if you say Count Vlad Dracula. That they said that where they just said Dracula was his first and last name. It was just Dracula. Yeah, like Cher. Yeah, he's just as glorious as Cher. I didn't. They keep see living on forever. She might be Dracula. Fuck <laughs> it. Right, or his one of his brides. One of his hoes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dracula, you got hoes. <laughs> Apparently, lots of them per Van Helsing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Such a good Full movie. circle, you're welcome. Yay, good we're back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there was no invisible man in that movie. That's weird. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was there. <laughs> you just didn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He was taking notes. <laughs> With, yeah, naked. <laughs> That's the that's the only biggest thing 
issue I have with Invisible Man is that he was fucking naked in all his shit. Did you, they show his junk? You can't see it. It's invisible. Do. Yeah, but he has to be invisible. He has to strip down. Yeah, so okay. you're not going to see the bulge in the in the wrap. <laughs> I have a serious question. Okay. Well, if he runs, does he give his location because he's like... That's assuming the dude's packing. Something's flapping. Something's flapping. Just assuming. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. I think that's what the first thing somebody would do if they were the invisible man. They just go into like a bathroom and just... Check it out. He Ooh, was what in, was that? What he, was that? He was in the pool. We yeah. get it. We get it. Invisible packing tape. All right. What's your favorite Dracula or vampire movie? Dracula? Are we sticking with Dracula? Are we going Monster with Squad. Monster Squad again? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, he's just developed. So, I mean, he's in so many things. TV shows, mm-hmm. you know, movies. There's everything. so many things with him. Right. I mean, I don't think it's been a good Dracula oh, minute, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's actually pretty... Oh, I love him. It's actually good Drag. in that, yeah. Adam Sandler, I don't know how he became... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Blah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've actually never seen... Don't you say it. Boris Karloff. What? Well, no, he, no, I have, because he was in the Abbott and Costello, and I think the movie's called Abbott and Costello Meets Frankenstein. Yeah, I think they're all meat. They're all there. That's right here. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I keep reading that Gary Oldman's Dracula was really good. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch it. Was it wasn't good? I, I would argue no. Okay. No. What about Brad Pitt's vampire? I've never seen that interview with a vampire. Oh, yeah. oh, that was a good, good one. Is it? I've never seen it. I would say no to that too. I didn't think it was very good. Well, that's like the thing it. is, I don't know what a what's the best vampire then. What's the I was just gonna say that because they all have such mm-hmm. different powers. Yeah, like there's so many different takes. Well, like the vampires in Underworld, though I love Underworld, they're kind of weak in comparison. Like you think of vampires, and they're supposed to be like the super strong ones, and I don't think they were that badass. No, they, they used were using guns, guns, guns and lot, shit, right? Yeah. Like they were not that cool. I mean, even the Twilight vampires are almost more badass than them because they're yeah, super true. strong, strong, super fast. fast. Like they had way more powers. Right. Some of them see the the vampires like a like a like a horde and not as developed, I mm. guess. Unless you're a super vampire. Unless, yeah, unless you're the, like the, 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 the OG. Well, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme. So you, you, you <laughs> go to- <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Well, in Supernatural, they're all in hives. And they mm-hmm. all are super weak, too, but they have, like, their originals. I think my favorite vampire probably is from, like, the originals in Vampire Diaries. Those vampires are actually badass. Have you guys ever seen the the TV show uh, What We Do in the Shadows? No, but I've That's been meaning so to. Funny, I've been meaning got to. to. I think you'll like it a lot. No, my original va- uh, vamp uh, Dracula is Monster Squad. I think I think Van Helsing is probably the only one I've ever been like, oh fuck, that's a fucking. That was, vampire. He was a good Dracula. Mm-hmm. He, was he was very good. yeah. He's strong. He was very uh, I don't know. Mostly distinguished. I can't, I can't think of any of the Draculas really. Yeah, all of a sudden I'm just drawing a blank. I watched the Netflix Dracula. And I was really into it for the first two episodes, and then I, there was only four episodes, oh. and I, I didn't really <laughs> like. Halfway. I didn't really like the ending. It was it was weird. Yeah, I didn't with the nuns and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, like it, it started out good. It just I didn't expect it to go where it went. I actually think part of what I didn't like about it was I felt the I don't remember his act the actor's name, but I felt he was a little too old. Mm. I know the man in theory is centuries old, but I, I don't know. Maybe I just kind of felt like. A younger mm-hmm. actor would have been better. Well, they but. did the, the the another Dracula movie with the guy who plays Gaston in the new Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I forget his oh, name. Oh, Dracula Untold. That, Is that was what it's called. Yeah, that was. I it was it was bad. Okay, I didn't watch it. It's just not them. I mean, I think it's just because maybe we're burnt on vampires. Yeah, played right? out, played yeah, out a little bit. A lot of vampire stuff and a lot of this and that, so you could kind of yeah, meh. Like yeah. werewolves, I I think I enjoy more werewolves than I have. Mostly because it's usually the the sheriff's got to do something cool and yeah. fight the bad guy. I just the I sheriff. like that they transform. You know, there's always breaking bones yeah. and tearing skin and just we, whatever you're into, buddy. How's your wife? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, it, it's just graphic. It's like that's what you expect out of a horror. Yeah, movie. I mean, like, it creates that horror aspect. Well, speaking of which, they've always said the American Werewolf in London has always been one of the best transformations up until recently. With the new, you know, Hollywood magic that they can sprinkle these days. Some of that, some of that Hollywood magic is kind of trash. 
Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, Scorpion King being one of them. Well, that was 2002. You have okay. to remember. Okay. <laughs> well, now we're CGIing so much, it just feels like we've just gone too far. Mm-hmm. It was like before we were all taking natural selfies. Now we're taking over filtered selfies. I want to be in the middle somewhere Not, where no I like Dracula. look better than I look right this moment without <laughs> having to put makeup on, but I don't want to look like someone completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. That looks like me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, in werewolves, I just don't think are overdone. They're always like a nice accessory to something. Mm-hmm. Like in Underworld, they're not the main focal point of it, but I think they play a good part of it, yeah. and they put a lot of the history in, and it's really interesting. And the different twists with them either being the protectors of the of Dracula or, and, and the vampires or them being the natural enemies of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they have different roles to play depending on the movie. Mm-hmm. All right. So that is what we have for you tonight. What's, on the, to what's, what's the other? Sorry. Is there, there's another creature, right? Well, well, I know we didn't do it. We didn't <clears> do <throat> zombies. We didn't do witches. Well, I was say, well at least for the big the swamp monster. Swamp monster. The, the creature, creature from, from the blue, black, the blue black lagoon. Black lagoon. Black lagoon. Fuck, dude. Yeah. There's, a, there's a game we play. It's called Horrified. And you, you go against the, the creatures. You know, Dracula. A, that was a good man. game. It's actually really fun. But as you, you can decide if you want to go against them, like Frankenstein, Frankenstein's wife, all of them. But every time we played it, we we played against the creature from the lagoon. I always call it the blue lagoon. But it's the black lagoon. It's black lagoon. Yes. The black lagoon. I would argue that that movie poster is actually the best Universal monster movie poster they ever did. I think it's the most iconic, yeah. Yes. So. Remember that fucking fish lad? <laughs> <laughs> He's also in Monster Squad. Just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what we have for you tonight on to business. Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook. We have a Facebook page wow. if you're curious Somebody or interested. Like... Send us a request um, to join. So, but in the meantime, if you have a topic that you want the panda or slasher Samantha or the polar bear to cover, send us a request or an email. That's to our very one. long email address. Yes, sir, we have not yes, abbreviated. <laughs> abbreviated. <Yeah. laughs> the dark corners are at gmail.com. Final thoughts, slashers with Samantha. Um, I'm just going to go with the werewolf is my favorite for sure. I was kind of jealous that Polar Bear got him. Yes. It's fine. Polar Bear. I also <laughs> think werewolf is my favorite. Two <laughs> votes for werewolf. Zero for Invisible Man. <laughs> 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 to be fair, there was an Invisible Woman, which is canon, so in the the movies they made before. He even fought for our country. They made him an agent. The first one's like the the scary one and everything after that is just like a adventure movie with the Invisible Man. It's kinda weird. Okay. It's yeah. kinda weird. So but I also do think being a werewolf would be really cool, so you know, Lupin didn't think so, but whatever. Lupin, Lupin got tonks, bro. Yeah. By the way, I actually just read an article saying people She's didn't understand that relationship. Oh, I love that relationship. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Just, you don't like it? No, I I didn't have beef with it. I'm just saying I just saw an article. I think it was the age difference. Probably. I think Lupin is a little. And he ah. was so like, eh, eh, and she was like, let's do this, bitch. Well, that's why opposites attract. Fuck them. Sure. Whatever. Fuck it. Either way, Team Werewolf. <laughs> I yes. like this. <laughs> invisible Man's next, though. Just saying. Okay. First loser. Second I can't be best. invisible forever. I, I, would, I would go crazy, too. So I understand where they're all coming from. So mm. if I was a werewolf once a month. Might we'll f- maybe man- manage it? Yeah. Maybe I get a six pack that comes with it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. All right. Yeah, so, so tell us who Yeah, what the hell is that? All of a sudden, people. you don't want to participate. No, <laughs> she's like, nope. <laughs> no, to all of our fans out there, because yeah. please tell us. <laughs> we do. I'm like, break this tie right now. Is Invisible Man a real monster, first and foremost? No. Is werewolf yes. the best? <laughs> yeah, if, it, if something causes terror and fear into you, and he doesn't have to do anything. He just has. He doesn't have to be there. You won't just even move, know. It, move, invisibly move your shit? Yeah, he fucks with your shit. Okay. Fuck that. If there's, if there's a naked dude in my room and I don't know about it, I'm going to be nervous. <laughs> 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 what was your favorite? Mine is Dracula. All right, well, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So until next time, please remember, 
Only if you can find the beauty in the darkness, along with the monsters or the invisible man. (laughs) (laughs) Which is where we hope to meet you, but not naked. (laughs) Well, (laughs) either way. (laughs) Where the dark corners are. Dracula, Dracula, Dracula used black magic. Okay. I just can't black fucking magic. talk You're almost today. there. Almost there. <laughs> Stay <know>. strong. <laughs> like, I got so distracted. I was just like so into yeah. you guys. Like, I start getting sleepy. <laughs> okay. Let's try this again. We bored her. No, I just was like very comforted. <laughs> she felt comfortable being around. She's like, all right, it's normal. It was so nice. <laughs> anyway.